Welcome to the Relationship Series Podcast. My name is Ankush Jain, and each episode I'll be speaking to a different state of mind expert on the subject of relationships. Enjoy. Welcome to episode 41 of the Relationship Series. This week, I'm joined by Wendy Sajasi. Wendy is a consultant and coach from San Diego. She works with a number of different organizations, schools, uh, individuals, and she is, like everyone else on this series, a state of mind expert. Great to have you with us, Wendy. Thank you for having me. Now, Wendy, uh, you're someone who I met recently in London, um, you were speaking on stage at a conference and you'd reached out to me um, really to, to, to say that, you know, you, you wanted to be on the show. And I have to be honest, I know we've said this before, I was a little bit reluctant, you know, I was like, oh, I don't really know you. And um, I, I, I keep the, I like to think I keep the quality of speakers on the show very high. And I remember when I heard you speak in London, within 10 seconds, I was like, Yes, I want you on the show. So I'm I'm so glad that that I got to hear you, and I'm so glad that you've joined us for this for this podcast. Okay, Ankush, don't make me cry. That's too sweet. <laughs> no, not not at all, not at all. It's it's it, it's great. Now, there's so many ways we we could go with this, but a good place to start, and I start with with most of the people I interview, is just a little bit of a background around how you came to. Um, get a deeper understanding of how our mind works. You know, I talk about state of mind um, and, and how you came across that originally. What, what was your journey to, to, you know, from whatever you were doing to what, to what you're doing now? Okay, well, let's see. Where will I start? Um, you know, ever since I was about, I'd say, 15, my mom took me to different things like... Uh, I went to a yoga treat and an ashram. She was really into that for a while. And my mom always used to say, seek ye first the kingdom inside. So what she meant by that was just to be happy first and then look for your success in the world or in a relationship. And she was basically saying that life is really a game from the inside out instead of the outside in. So in other words, a relationship or success in your career, while they're beautiful and everybody wants to attain that, those things don't actually cause you to be happy. When you get at peace with yourself, then you're happy. It doesn't come from things that you attain in life. And, um, so I, at a very young age, had been taught that idea. But what I went to do is after that initial ashram experience, I kept looking for some technique or some kind of thing to make me feel okay with myself. And I struggled a lot with depression. So I went, I did something called neuralistic neuro-linguistic programming. I did the work of Byron Katie. I did meditation. I did all these things. Um, and that's just like not even a quarter of the list of things I did. And I was always trying to feel better about who I was. I, I basically walked around with this assumption that there was, I hate to say it, it's almost embarrassing, but I really thought something was wrong with me. Like I'd get depressed and, and think something's wrong with me. Why I can't just be a normal, happy person. Everyone in the world looked like they were doing better than me. And I thought that I had to go find something to fix me. So I did this journey, always looking for something to fix me from, I would say, about 15 and a half to 
uh, present and and things that I did were really beautiful and I'd get an uh, an insight like a feeling like everything was okay but it really wouldn't last and I'd I'd see a certain theory or technique and and I would use it to sort of beat myself up from with and I'll say how that would work it's like I did this one thing called option and it was the guy wrote a book called happiness is a choice and it was this beautiful exploration of your beliefs and and it's really valid and it's really a nice technique well basically what they did is ask you questions in a non-judgmental way and and you'd uncover these beliefs you were holding and you'd see that they weren't true well he wrote this book called happiness is a choice so I remember thinking, okay, if happiness is a choice, and I know that, and I'm not happy, something is really messed up about me. Something is really wrong with me. And so I just kept on looking for little, you know, whatever was the up and coming um, popular state of mind thing. And then I would say about, it's been almost four years, maybe three and a half years, where I did finally find something that helped me understand the world differently. And what happened was I went to basically a state of mind expert. What happened was my husband was really depressed. He went to this guy who was a psychiatrist and he started practicing this way of looking at the world where you understand that your thoughts are just transient things that pass through you because you're human and you have, I'd, I'd say, about 45 thoughts per minute. And he explained that in a way that made my husband get really quiet. So he came back from this lifelong struggle with depression and he said he, he something really shifted in him. And um, I said to him, well, what, what, what did he say? And he didn't really know how to explain it. So I went to this person and I went in with a very, very busy mind thinking that I had to somehow fix myself once again for the umpteenth time. And what he said to me made me settle down and get so quiet. It was quieter than any other meditation that I'd ever practiced. And I don't know exactly what he said, but he explained to me how you're always living in the feeling of your thinking, that the circumstances in the outside world were not causing you to feel a certain way, and that we are innately healthy. Under that thinking, that health was there. It always was, and it always will be. Something in what he said and how he presented this idea made me get so quiet that I knew from that quiet, like it wasn't just a quiet, it was a beautiful feeling. And from having that feeling, I realized something. I realized that the answers are not found in your intellectual thinking of how to fix things. And I went on to study some more and um, I just have gotten to the point of seeing life from a whole different perspective. And it's changed me. After all those, I would say, 37-ish years of trying to change me, I actually am different, because I really truly am different. It's an incredible story and, and one that is quite common with people that I've, I've talked to from, from what I hear that you're saying. It's that you'd been around psychology, self-development, self-improvement for a very long time. And then your husband got really impacted by something you hadn't heard of. And then when you started to explore it, it was so impactful that you transferred your whole business to sharing, teaching, coaching from 
from what you learned recently around state of mind. Exactly. And in that conference in London, I remember saying, I don't even recognize myself. I remember saying, I, there's nothing to fix. There's nothing to fix. And that was so huge for me. And it remains huge for me because it's just such a difference in the other things I was doing because even though some of them were very beautiful, I still thought that there was something wrong with me that needed to be fixed. And now in my life, I see myself so differently. Like if I get caught up in my thinking, like sometimes your thinking looks so real um, and you're upset about something that happened and it seems really, really real in the moment that it seems real. Now, when I used to have a problem, I used to feel bad because your thinking actually translates into your feeling. So if you're having thinking like insecure thinking, like Wendy sucks and she's not good enough and everybody's better than her, then that obviously would make me feel bad, right? Well, what I would do before is I'd feel bad and then I'd stay on that same level and try to think my way out of feeling bad. And then I would get into this personality that I hate about myself, what, which was I would get into this needy feeling like somebody needs to come and fix me and I need to talk to every friend on the planet. Like how many friends can you talk to in one day to make you feel better and vent and fix it? And, but that never worked. It was almost like um, when you feed yourself empty calories, you stay hungry, you know? And what I realized is there was never anything to fix. And now when I get into a state of mind that isn't the best and I start thinking unconfident thoughts, what happens is I realize that th those are just thoughts and that I don't have to fix them. And something about fixing them, actually, and engaging those thoughts, that makes you feel even worse. And now I understand something different, that I don't have to engage those things. They're just transient thoughts. And they just naturally move if I leave them alone. It's just human to sometimes have insecure thoughts. So what? And now my life is, is, I can't even tell you how much more free it is because even as you know, and some people that know me know is I have been, um, my circumstances in life haven't really gotten better. I have cancer and it's stage four cancer. And the first two years of dealing with stage four cancer, um, which was way back in 2010, I was emotionally, uh, I couldn't function sometimes. I was so upset about it. And now I have cancer. My journey is still here with cancer. And oh my gosh, anxious, anxious, I am more stable and happier than I ever have been in my life. And just to ask a quick clarifying question, Wendy. For, for people who don't know much about cancer, what, what what does stage four cancer mean? Stage four, well, there's no stage five. <laughs> stage four means you have terminal cancer. Now, there's different levels of terminal cancer. Some of the cancer is fast moving, some is not. Um, but I have the kind of cancer that no traditional medicine, no one has an answer that says we can cure you. It will never be cured as far as the traditional medicine in both the UK and the United States goes, um, there's possible things that could extend your life, but at some point, um, no, you know, they can't really do anything to just get you to get better. I haven't lost hope though, because I, I'm, I believe in both alternative and traditional. So that's that. But since this is a relationship series, I'm happy to talk about relationships because 
I realized even yesterday I said to my husband, actually this morning I said to him, this stinks that I have cancer because I'm more in love with you than I've ever been. Because finally something has shifted me in me so deeply and in him as well that I'm so free to be in love with my husband. I'm like, it's too bad that I have cancer and I have to deal with that too. But Ankush, I'm happier in my relationship than I've ever been. Um, I, some of the things that I feel in my relationship now, and I've been with my husband 15-ish years, really 21 years together, um, I never thought I'd feel. I never thought I'd be this happy in my relationship. What do you put that down to? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I'll tell you something that happened the other day. Is um, I wanted to, we were b thinking about buying another house and renting our house out that we're in right now. And we were going through with a process, almost done with getting approved for a loan and whatnot. And in the middle of trying to fall asleep, my husband sits up in bed and he says, we're not buying that house. I'm not moving. I really saw, I didn't say anything to him. I knew I was going to try to get him to move anyway. But I just, in that moment, I had enough wisdom. M my mind and thinking was settled down enough to know that that was not the time to even address it. Just let's let this moment pass. So just right there in the past, I would have started a fight right then and there. But now in present, I knew that if he's in a low mood about something and it's upsetting me, then it's really not a good time to address whatever I want. So the next day I got very disappointed. Even though I was disappointed, I kind of knew that my role in my thinking about it was really the thing disappointing me. It wasn't my husband saying no. It was my thinking about what that means. So the next day I asked him again about it and I was feeling in a little bit of a better mood. And I said, he said, no, I'm not moving. And I said, I'm sure this was going to be such a good opportunity for us and for our child. He'd move school to not moving. In that moment when I was disappointed, all I saw was my way of doing it. And what I saw about myself is I really didn't like my husband that much when I wasn't getting what I wanted. And if I acted out of the feeling of not liking my husband, I really would have just kind of tried to manipulate him into what I wanted and overlook everything that he felt as true. Well, a couple of days passed by and we came up with this whole other idea about how to make this move. And it was better than the first idea. So just to give you a concrete thing, the idea was we could rent a place in that area and rent out our house and not have to do this giant move. And that was better for everybody. But in the moment when I was feeling down and disappointed and thinking my husband was a jerk for not giving me what I want, I couldn't even see a better solution. It wasn't until my thinking settled down, his thinking settled down, and then this solution from this beautiful innate wisdom, from this beautiful quiet that we have that lies under thought, that quiet that I was talking about that was always there that I never knew. I thought I had to go get something to get it. I didn't know my thinking was actually covering it like a blanket. So when the time passed, it, we came up with this better solution that was 100% better. And, and I had so many realizations in that, that it's not even true that my husband makes me unhappy. I mean, in the past, I could see how that whole thing could have blown up into the biggest fight. And I would have had on my mind, I would have been thinking, I need a divorce. I need a divorce. I can't stand him. This relationship isn't working. But in the recognition that it was only my thinking in the moment, and that it's superhuman 
it's just human and beautiful to have thinking now and then. It's just what we do. And there was no, there's no real judgment. I innocently thought that I had to like squat, squash my husband wants to get what I want. Cause that was what was best for the family. And I got to do this. And I could see how a whole fight could present himself itself in that. And everything was just transient and it moved. And then what happened was a better solution for everybody. You know, we've had a lot of people on this show and it's very easy to talk about this is how our mind works and this is how it's relevant. But what's incredible is to have someone on the show who has, you know, terminal cancer and and still say, yes, this is how my mind works. Because I can imagine someone else in the same situation as you who would not be, and I'm sure a lot of people would say, well, we're not, I don't feel in love with my husband and this is the worst thing ever and not really see anything about, you know, their own roles in what's happening and really feel like a victim. But what's incredible to me is you're echoing every single other person we've had on this podcast and really pointing in the same direction and say, look, regardless of what happens, regardless of what situation is either generally in my life or specifically with my partner, that my thinking is always what's giving me how my experience of life, of how I feel. And so if I'm upset with my partner, in this case your husband, then that's really only down to one thing, which is you and your thinking. And then not to do anything about it, but that's just part of the human experience. It will change. And when you allow it to change, relationships seem to get better. It's a miracle to me because I tried so hard to change. And I wasn't one of those people that would talk about my husband like, oh, he's the greatest guy ever, blah, blah, blah. I had a lot of ideas. Um, and even with cancer, my husband's ideas about how I should deal with my cancer and my ideas we he's more of a traditionally based person and I'm more of a holistic person so he had we had a lot of disagreements about that and I don't actually they're not even disagreements we had some all-out fights and so he was so a lot of times in the cancer world You'll hear, hear people talking about stress and cancer, and you'll hear, hear people say things like, you need support. You need your, your family to support you. Now, what I would do with that is go inside my head, and I would think, oh my gosh, I'm with the wrong guy. I need someone supportive, and he doesn't believe in anything I'm doing. And this is going to cause me to die because I need support. They're all telling me I need support. And what that did is cause so much stress and so much anxiety about my relationship. And when I saw that everything at every moment is my thinking, that I need support from my husband is just a, a thought. When you think you need support from your husband, then you're looking for a particular way that he's supposed to support you. So what happened with me is I didn't see that there was my husband standing there supporting me. Now, it didn't look the way I thought it should look or the way I wanted it to look. But when I stopped having, when I saw those thoughts as not so real, I saw this great guy supporting me. And also with the things that he didn't believe in and continually with the things that he doesn't believe in and I do believe in, I feel so much different. Like I don't need him to support me. He is supporting me, but it's not always in the way I think it should be. I, and Kush, I walked into my doctor's office recently and, I, and he was not that nice. And I realized, wow, Wendy, you don't need your doctors to be nice to you anymore because... It's just them. They're like people, human beings are 
always at every time they're living in the feeling of their own thinking. So here's another idea of a, a little thing that happened between my husband and I. Um, my husband has a lot of thinking that he sees as real about money. Like you can't spend money and all this stuff. He's probably right, but whatever. It, it bothers him when I spend money. And so the other day, not about a month ago or so, I really wanted to take this one course to further my studies in my state of mind. And it's expensive. And I remember my husband was mowing the lawn and I told him I wanted to take that course. And I was pretty focused that I wanted to do that and I needed to start a conversation with him. And he said some really mean and awful things to me. Really, really ugly. The kind of things that in the past I would have been doing that kind of crying that goes, <gasps> you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe. And I would have in the past called every friend I know to say how bad and wrong he was and get validation that I was right and he was wrong and all that stuff. Well, what I saw that day was when I told him I wanted to spend this money, I was poking at his money pimple, let's say. And when I poked that money pimple, the pus spewed all over me. And the pus was just him making me wrong and telling me those awful things. Well, at the moment, it didn't really matter to me. I didn't even hear it because I was so focused on just opening up the conversation. And a few days later, he settled down. And I didn't see that as personal because in the moment, he didn't even see me, Wendy, his wife. He just saw, he just felt someone poking at his ideas about money. And that's what I mean by in every moment, you're living in the feeling of your thinking, and he is too. Now, in the past, I would have taken that personally, and it would be that would have been a giant fight and it would have been days and maybe weeks of me hating him. But I just saw that, Oh, I just poked the money pimple. Let's just let, give it a little time to settle down because when you're angry, you say all kinds of crazy things, all human beings do. And so I don't take that, that kind of thing personally anymore. And occasionally I do because my thinking is off. And, and when I do, I just usually, have the thought to just leave it alone for a while until everybody settles down. It's so simple. It's just what everybody's been always telling us. Sleep on it. You know, like, don't write the email, sleep on it. It's just that simple. Um, and Ankish, what I see is the more I see this, the more in love with my husband and more eyes I have to see the support that he does give me. And we don't agree on a lot of things. Um, we're not, everything's not all, you know, sweet and everything. He's a, he believes in different things than me, but we, we make it through all the time. And what I notice now is when we do have some sort of disagreement or fight, it's a great story to tell because we know enough to let our thinking settle down. And it usually comes to some other way of seeing the world in the direction that the world your husband, your kids, your boss, nobody's making you feel a certain way. You're living in your feeling of the thinking about the world. It, it really sounds like to me, Wendy, that the main relationship, and I, I might be putting words in your mouth, but the main relationship that changed in your life was your relationship with yourself. I think so. I think you're right. And out of that, the miracle of the beauty of the relationships seems to change, too. It's like this little, uh, I'm, I bet you found this, too. But with myself and my clients, I notice that when they change, sometimes the people around them shift and change, too, because you're giving them space. Like, I gave Tom, my husband, the space to have his thinking about money. And I just didn't really have to change him. So that gave him space to settle his own self down. And then 
I almost don't even know why, but I'm more in love with him than I've ever been. I told him that this morning. Oh, here's another funny thing. <laughs> I went to the a breathing class the other day. Yeah, I know. We already know how to breathe, but whatever. I just felt like doing it for entertainment. And I noticed in the breathing class, I noticed um, how I was just breathing and I noticed how my thinking just settled down and I was just so in my heart. And in the moment when I was so in my heart, I realized, wow, I so appreciate my husband and I'm so in love with him. And so I come home and I say to him, wow, that breathing, I, I really got in my heart and I remembered how I'm so in love with you and I'm so lucky. And he's like, you're spending too much money. And I'm like, it was the funniest thing. It was so funny because it just showed me how it's still my thinking that I'm in love with him because I came back and he was having this whole different experience of me and our relationship. He was just really experienced his thoughts about me spending too much money. And when he said that to me, I didn't say, oh, you just cramped my style. I was feeling so good. I thought it was really just funny how we really think it's that person making us feel good or bad. And it's not. It's just our thinking. Because he wasn't there when I was having my experience of how much I loved him. I just was having my experience. So I come home and he yells at me that I'm spending too much money. And I just found it really, really funny. Yeah, you know, I can I can so relate to so many of the things that you're saying. And it just reminds me that no one knows what's going on in our heads. So when, when you're having that experience of loving your husband, he doesn't know that. And it's it's funny because I don't know about you, Wendy, but certainly in the past, and I, I'm embarrassed to admit I still do this, there are times when I'll be think, thinking something about my fiancé or, or someone else in my life, and I act as if they know what I'm thinking. <laughs> but they've got no idea. I do that all the time still. I, I still now I see that that's just human. And here's a funny thing with that and cancer. I recently was on a cancer website and I was on this thread and um somebody was complaining about something that someone said to her about cancer, about having cancer. And I said well, will everybody write a little, a sentence or two about the worst thing anybody ever told you when you told them you had cancer? And the things that came out, I started to find humorous. And the people prior to that got hurt feelings that, oh, she would say that to me when I have cancer. But so people would say things like, um, oh, at least you get a free boob job. And people, the cancer people were really upset. So I remember um, a friend of mine once said, one of my friends said to me, well, you know, you created your own cancer. Um, people said to other people things like, um, I'm trying to think now, it was a while ago. Oh, you're lucky your husband's staying with you because you have cancer because, you know, most guys would leave you. Like just things that you would see as very mean and insensitive. The, one of the things a friend of mine that is a really beautiful, supportive, intelligent friend said to me was, she, um, she had a sister-in-law that had terminal cancer as well. And I asked her after a while, how is your sister? And she said, oh, I didn't want to tell you, but she died. And then she went on to say, and the husband is so relieved now, that wouldn't be a great thing to tell a cancer person, right? Because are you saying to me that my husband will be relieved to not to have me dead? But what I wrote to those cancer people and all the things people said is, wow, isn't this cool? Because isn't it so obvious that when you say you have cancer to somebody, they are in their own thinking and their own world about what cancer means. And when they say something to you, they're innocently just saying things out of their own thinking. They don't even see that there's a human being over there that is suffering from cancer. 
they're just talking. Everybody is always walking around in this like capsule of their own thinking of the world. So when people say mean things or hurtful things, when you say you have cancer, I was trying to express to the gals in the group that they're just so blind. They're in their own fear about what cancer means. And it's not personal. Just like my husband um, yelling me about spending money. That's not personal. He's not even in that moment seeing his wife, a person right in front of him. He's only seeing his thinking about spending money. And at every moment in time, that's what's happening. And one of the times I had a really good example of this as well is at that last conference, one of the little girls, there was a panel of speakers that was teenager, were teenagers. And one of the little girls said, you know, I just want to be nice to everybody now. Because she was saying something to the effect of she used to, she was walking in a park and she saw a woman talking on her cell phone and acting a certain way and yelling. And she used to go into her thinking and say, well, you know, that woman is this or that and be really judgmental. And this little girl realized everybody is just caught up in their own ideas about the world in that moment. And, and it's rather innocent. They're just caught up. My husband was just caught up in thinking that I'm doing something harmful to the family by spending money. And these people that say these things that seem hurtful to these people with cancer, they're just caught up in their own fears about what cancer means and their own mortality. Nobody's really seeing you in the moment. They're just caught up in their own thinking about what what you are doing means to them. It's thinking. It's their thinking. So it's, it's so much less personal than I always thought. So that's why I could get along with my kids and my husband so much better. So what if someone's listening to this, Wendy, and, and they're thinking, well, that, that's great, but, but surely if someone said that to me and I had cancer, or maybe someone's listening to this and they've got cancer or any kind of health problem and people are saying you know what would be seen as mean things are you saying they're not justified in feeling upset about that or that they're wrong about feeling upset or they shouldn't well, what would you say to someone like that that's a great question well let's use my husband as the example i could really get upset that he yelled at me and said all those things And I'm not wrong if I feel bad. It's innocent. But the freedom that you could feel in somebody saying something to me about cancer or somebody saying something hurtful to me, the freedom is so much more expansive. My life is so much freer and I have so much more joy when I start understanding that people are living in their own world of their thinking. Now, that does not mean I might not react and say, listen, you can't say that to me, or you need to be speak to me differently. But when I come to the realization that I'm always living in the feeling of my thinking, even if that person is doing their money dance or their you shouldn't have created cancer dance. When I just start seeing into that, even if it's a little bit, life changes or it has changed for me. And here's another example. I have a client that her her boss was always micromanaging her and judging her and she'd make these squinched up faces to her. And my client said to me, you know, I love everything about my job except my boss. And initially she felt like she should fix her boss. Like that had to go. And one day after understanding how life works and and talking about how the circumstances don't cause you to feel bad or the people, it's your own personal thinking that causes you to feel bad. She went to work one day and she looked at her boss and she got very quiet 
And her boss was making those squinched up faces. The boss was trying to micromanage her. And she just turned around and she did her job. And she had no ideas about how her boss should be different. And that experience changed everything for her at her job. And after that, that relationship was never the same. Now, just to clarify, that doesn't mean that you go and lay down and let people step on you. All it means is when you settle down in your thoughts about how people should behave, you're just, you settle down in your thinking and you get to a beautiful place or, or even a little bit of a better place. You sleep on it. You don't write the email. You're in a better place to deal with whatever it is. And you may, your, your own personal wisdom may say, I need to tell that person never to talk to me that way again. Or I need to go to someone higher up than that boss. I need to have a conversation with my husband. You could have, you could do the same thing that you might have done, but when you do it from a a space of quiet, of not needing them to change, you're so much more effective and you're so much more joyful. Does that make sense at all? It it really does. And, you know, as, as we're kind of getting to the end of this interview, I'm, I'm just reflecting back and just how graceful, elegant and mature you come across in handling a situation in life that many people would would think would be very understandable that you know it would throw you for a loop and it's very clear to me at least that seeing life as you do can only be a really good thing not only for your relationships but just for your sanity i have to preface this with every now and then i'm not too graceful i get caught up as well I get scared. I get into my thinking in the middle of the night. Oh my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? But I understand something different. And when you talk about my sanity, even when I get caught up a little bit, it's nothing like I was before. I didn't come to this naturally. Like I wasn't this, I was needy. I was um, trying to fix myself and cancer You know, some people are really positive no matter what. I was not. And yeah, I'm so much more sane. I had bad news the other day and I'm here talking to you and loving life. I was was treating kids. I was a victim of cancer before and that was all encompassing. That was all I saw. Guess what? Even though I know it's my thinking, that doesn't mean that I don't get caught up in. That's part of the weather, let's say, of being human. You have emotions, you get sad, you get caught up, you get hangry, happy, you get angry. That's just part of you being human. It's the beauty of having weather. Um, so uh, I'm completely different, even though I do not look graceful from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Wendy. We've we've run out of time, but if people have been impacted by this, if they've got any questions for you, if they just want to reach out, what's the best way that they can do that? Oh, um, my website is wakeupyourwisdom.com. You can reach me there or Wendy's to JC, um, W-E-N-D-I-S-A-G-G-E-S-E.com. And I often do a free consultation with people. I don't mind. I love, I love talking to people about state of mind. And so anytime I'm available, I love talking about this because it's changed my life completely. And I know it has yours as well, Inkush. Thank you so much for having me. It really has. Thank, thank you so much for being on here, Wendy. And I love from, uh, hearing from people on the show. I, I love getting questions. And I know some people reach out. If this has touched you or any of the other episodes, if you'd like to get in touch or just send me a comment or or an email, the best way to get hold of me is through my website, which is www.unkushjane.co.uk. That's A-N-K-U-S-H-J-A-I-N 
www.co.uk and you can find me via the contact me page. This episode and all the other episodes are available via the blog section of that website as well. Thank you so much, Wendy, and I look forward to uh, doing another one of these with someone else next time. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Relationship Series podcast. If you want to hear more, you can click the subscribe button below. You can share this and impact someone else who can benefit, or you can like it and encourage others to listen. Also, it'd be great if you leave me a comment below as I always love hearing from listeners and I want to keep creating great content for you. Thanks for listening.